Um, our next speaker, um, I was floored when I saw his application come through. Um, Maria Perez from Gensler kind of gave me a heads up and said she had seen this uh, incredibly intelligent 16-year-old speak about um, renewables and oil subsidies. Um, Gabriel Paveda um, is our youngest Ignite speaker tonight. Uh, he's learned early in life the power of conversation and civil discourse, particularly as it relates to a cause that he cares about most, energy, resources, and the environment. Gabriel has a powerful and provocative message, a challenge to the way that we think about our natural resources, and the interplay between economics, government, and the principles of competition. Don't blink, he's very persuasive. We're honored to he be he for Gabriel to be here as our guest. Let's welcome our next speaker, Gabriel Paveda. Let's do this. Um, I'm Gabriel Poveda. Happy Veterans Day. Today I'm going to talk about oil subsidies and how they limit growth for renewable energy. First off, I'd like to talk about how they are a barrier to ingenuity, growth, and uh, a free market. This story begins in 1913 a Rockefeller America 100 years ago. A special clause in a revenue act creates a precedent and oil companies can now write off the cost of oil and gas wells by 5%. As decades go by, this precedent becomes a myriad of special interest and tax breaks. 5% widens to 15, and oil companies can now write off the cost of oil and gas wells uh, today. Uh, they pay much less than the standard 35% corporate tax rate. Now, oil subsidies come to define oil companies, and instead of innovation, a century of special interest gives rise to a century of complacency. Big companies get big help. Groups like ALEC and Americans for Prosperity spend millions of dollars on council member elections and state congresses. Like oil subsidies, they limit the market because they pass ordinances that prohibit wind plant development, solar installation, and the construction of new energy infrastructure. Oil subsidies create a problem. Because as a renewable energy company, you're not just competing against a large, established, multinational company, but you're also competing against the fiscal will of the US government. Tesla faced a similar problem. That's to compete against car companies who had been around for a long time and had millions of dollars worth of tax incentives and tax breaks. To succeed, they needed Uncle Sam's blessing, but mostly his pocketbook. Now, don't get me wrong, Tesla made it big because it had a wicked cool car that I'd love to own, but it also made it big because it was given a half a billion dollar loan by the Department of Energy in 2009. It had a balance to the millions of dollars the US already gave to American car companies. Ren Tesla needed the government to give them a hand so that they could get their head in the game, so that they could compete. In Renewable Energy's case, the government needs to do something so that they can get on the field and put up a good game. Our legislature needs to create a level playing field for all energy industries. Renewables can compete when things are fair. They are willing to innovate and they do not need loans and subsidies like Tesla got. Here's my idea. The United States should eliminate the special interest that the fossil fuel industry gets. In doing so, it'll allow renewable energy to compete and incentivize oil companies to innovate, to move towards cheaper, cleaner, alternative means of energy. Today, in 2016, oil companies don't have much competition, and that's a problem. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, no, I mean, basically, they, uh, it's a connection that I need you guys to make. Without competition, there isn't a free market, and without the free market, the consumer doesn't get the best product. Competition is like, um, it, it's supply and demand that works for us. The company with the best, cheapest product gets the consumer. So what do the other companies do? They make even better and cheaper products. Now, it's like your iPhone. Whenever a new iPhone comes out, it gets better. Whenever a new Samsung comes out, it gets better. It's competition, it's supply and demand, and it makes us get the best product. That's what our energy sector needs, innovation and competition. Once Tesla was allowed to succeed, it allowed competition and innovation in the car industry that gets us safer, cleaner, more fuel efficient cars. Once renewable energy is allowed to compete, it will do the same, it'll spark innovation, and here is why. 
The cost of solar has dropped by 80% in the last five years, and on the global stage, it'll account for half of the world's energy supply by 2030. The renewable energy's workforce consists of two-thirds of dedicated workers. Do you know what that means? It means that down to earth, renewable energy fights poverty dramatically and makes your bottom dollar lower. Rebuilding our country's energy infrastructure is a job of the future. It's a job that can't be exported, and it's a job of a growing industry. China is bringing in billions of dollars worth of renewable energy investment. They have so much potential when that potential could happen right here at home. If NRG can go green and innovate to move towards cheaper, cleaner, alternative means of energy, then renewable energy and petroleum companies of today can do the same. Innovation is where left meets right. It's where conservatives agree with liberals. For conservatives, we need fair capitalism, a free market so that there isn't government overreach. For liberals, now more than ever, we need something bipartisan that can break through gridlock and perhaps kick off the fight against climate change and save this one planet we all share. Thank you all very much for your time.